Are we going into Doom? Here's yeah. second, shut up. I should be ready here and just a bit. Yeah, I've been stuck in this game in forever. We're going for it. Hang out, trust me. I told you I was stuck in it. What else to do? Mm-hmm. 
No. I don't think I've ever played Doom before throughout the whole game. I have gotten close to the end of Duke Nukem. I played all of Wolfenstein. Never did. stuck in this level forever.
Why do I even keep trying? Never good. Finally. I bet there has to be something. Chicken says there ain't no secret door around there. So this is where I got stuck. After I got this one. Oh, thank you, Lord. Got a nugget. Let's save. Three seven twenty twenty. That was like a lifetime ago. October 21. October 23, 21. You can tell I was frustrated and I gave up. I can't believe that ain't a secret board order. first started the game way back when my father was still alive. That's just been my current mission. Another health nugget and he's 100%. At least he found those.
It really has been that long ago since I've played this game. Oh yeah, though, I got the 64 version. I probably started playing it after. I'm stuck in it, too. I don't remember where, because I don't remember the last time I played it. I don't like even though. Yeah. Like his own. Boy, where does he go from here? Where does he go? Where does he go? Where does he go? He's back here. Copters going over my house. It'd be one thing if I lived by a fucking airport, but I don't. It's all for some schmucks entertainment. Stand in the airport right away. You can't even stand the fucking traffic. Okay. You just running in circles. I'm about ready to give up again, just like I did in March 2020. I just think that was when the crap was all beginning. The shutdowns, all of it. Oh yeah, it was here. It was here before they said it was here. My doctor, he'd already put us on uh, those vitamin D's well into 19, up in the early 19. I wonder why he done that. Vitamin D is one of the things you need to live, vitamin D3. My freaking insurance has quit paying for the under Brendan. Under Brandon, I was listening to a piece of Savage's podcast there, and he was talking something interesting. I didn't get to hear the full podcast; I only heard about eh, 10, 15 minutes of it. He was talking about how Sanders is basically running everything. Sanders. You know the communists? The open communists? The one who used to love to travel to the former Soviet Union while it was the Soviet Union?
Colonel Sanders. Let's call him Colonel Sanders. Conrad Sanders. Conrad Burton. Now, he actually did officially win it. I mean, he really did. They stole that from him. Oh, Conrad. Conrad Sanders. Little white uniform. He wears a brown greenish brownish looking uniform with red bands on it I don't I can't never tell if I, see, I guess it's a dark green no it's too greenish for tan you know the communist uniform he was very popular with young people I never could get that That's why he was sitting there with mittens. That's what the mittens represented. <laughs> he was the real president. Eh. I don't like talking that junk on my game and streams. I just thought about that 320 bill. Like back then, there has to be a level somewhere where you get out of this level. There has to be. Indeed, I know there is. I just can't find it. Oh, my foot. Let's kill me. Oh no, not the corridors again. I'm not going back in there. I don't think there's anything in there. It could be. kind of exhaust pipes. that been as dangerous as it is to people's health, they really ought to write more tickets for that. When people leave their cars set apart. But that's one thing, if you have to do that, there's no need in doing it. Well, we always just got in the car and rode with the seats cold and everything. We let the air condition, I mean the heater warm up on its way towards where we were going. Oh, the schmuck must have been listening to me. Started racing his engine. How does these people do that? Are they that sick? They're sitting there and listening to people in their fucking houses? I mean, I know how they can do it. I'm just saying, why do you want to? I mean, what do you care what somebody else is doing? I mean, he certainly ain't watching my stream. I only got one viewer. Unless it's him. And even then, it would be 30 seconds later. I always hear myself in the past when I listen to the freaking stream. Oh yeah, not on this though. It's on the actual Switch console. I forgot. But there's still a few seconds. Away. 
you don't get to make it any any adjustments on the software on the console. I have run around and run around and run around just like I did in March 2020 when all the garbage was beginning. You know, back then I had an apocalyptic uh, thoughts. I didn't even think we would get this far. Thank Jesus, the, the ones who believe in Him are right. Not pessimistic me. I believe in Him too, but I'm just saying. I know how wicked these people are. I've been reading about these. Indeed, they almost robbed me of my faith reading, reading about them. That was when I actually questioned everything when I started studying the Illuminati crap. That's how sick and twisted and demented. And I know he's bigger than them. He sits in the heavens and laughs. Still, we're down here with him. And I have seen a lot of evil happen to people through history. I think, why could it not happen to us? And look at stuff Hitler done to people. And the communists did to people. And even the Americans at times. Look at how they treated the Indians. They gave them freaking blankets. With smallpox and People are evil. Of course, according to Alice Jones, it's supposed to get a lot worse. He was talking the other day. Well, I, I shouldn't have said his name. His name is Band. And I do that in a mocking way, y'all. I don't really care what they say or what they think. And I don't listen. I just mock it. And sometimes I really shouldn't do that. But sometimes it actually sounds like I'm bashing Alex mocking them at night I'm just mocking them I think it's ridiculous that they're scared of that one man of course no wonder he's willing to do what the media was supposed to do you know the media wasn't supposed to be their best friends they were supposed to be the ones keeping them in line instead now they're actually helping like when they ban people social media companies they ban people. They're actually helping those people. They're a, they're being a part of them. They're being a corporate arm of them, which gives them the legal legal way to get by with it, because the Constitution only applied to the Constitution only applied to, to the government. So if you hear me saying something that sounds negative towards Alice Jones, believe me, I'm just mocking. The only thing is sometimes I worry that maybe somebody might forward a snippet around maybe to the InfoWars crew or something and make it sound like I'm bashing them. But really I'm not, I'm just mocking the stuff. I really should be careful about how I mock it. But sometimes I'll listen to it and I'll say, in hindsight, I'll be like on my podcast and I'll be listening. That sounded pretty negative, even though I was just mocking. Dishonoring. I saw Jonathan Shuttlesworth do a show on that. Sometimes I can do that just by mocking. I don't really mean to do it, but it'll sound like I'm being mean, like I'm actually participating. And in some ways, when you do that, you are participating. Jonathan sort of made me think of that with a show. I'm going to try to be careful from now, even when I'm mocking. I want to make sure I really am mocking. Not being disrespectful. I don't really know anything. I don't. I didn't. Uh. A lot of times I didn't pay attention to them in school because they've always been hateful to me. So they just push me further away. You know what I'm saying? They, instead of making me want to participate, 
they made me want nothing to do with it at all. And now I look at some of these stupid people. They're being dumbed down, especially if I see it in the classroom. It breaks my heart because I didn't live through a lot of that stuff. I, even though I had some bad stuff going on, it wasn't nothing like this boy to walk around. And it makes me ashamed of how I, how I acted. Because they're really not being taught anything at all. At least I did have a few good teachers. And I listened to those few good teachers. But I'm thinking if the rest of them hadn't have been so hostile, maybe I would have listened a little more. You know what I'm saying? Well, they made it just be an all-out force thing with me because they forced it. You know I am. I don't work that way. And I know I was a kid, but it didn't matter. I was a big kid. I had the body the size of a man. And they may have had the authority, but they should have been careful with how they used their authority. As me being a child, they had that authority over me and me being in their care. But they should have been careful with how they did it, because when they went after me with an iron fist, I resist. And I did resist, and they almost wanted to send me away. Then started harassing my sister when I escaped and when I got too old. That's how bad these people were. They went after my sister. And she took some bad flu. 30 years ago, exactly now, y'all. Exactly. It was October, September, October, November when she was fighting me. We're talking about 30 years ago. And I just let them throw me out. I didn't like how they was doing her. I sat and listened to their riot act one more time. About how they're going to send me away and how I'm breaking the law. And then I finally, I, I let her, I don't know how long she went on. You know, time ain't really as long as we think it is. It's, it felt like forever. It could have been just five minutes. It felt like 10, 15 to me. I sat there and let her talk forever. And I said, do you ever think of something? Or did you ever pay attention to anything? I said, she said, yeah, what? Look, just look down at your paper. So what about it? So look at the birthday. She changed her tune real quick. She went from threatening. This is what I was talking about, the authority thing. They had the authority, but they should have been careful how they used it with me because I rebelled. And she, she started being real sweet. The minute I told her to look at my birthday, it had been two months, I had turned 16. In 16, they no longer had the, in Georgia at that time, 30 years ago, they didn't have no more authority over me after I turned 16. But you don't want to be thrown out. Them people are losers. No. They don't go nowhere in life. You won't be able to get a job. This is, you got to get, her, her ride act changed. She started telling me all the bad things that would happen to me if I didn't have an education. Now, at first, they weren't never worried about my education. They were just worried about getting them, them uh, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to cuss, those fucking tax dollars. Those fucking dollars for every seat that was in, the, which is what their real problem was. And see, when they thought they was going to lose it, she got sweet. She was a social worker. She wasn't the one that I fought with. That thing was at the other school, which my sister was now at. That evil woman. I call the evil woman. Evil woman. I hope she busts his hell wide open. I really did. She harmed. She really harmed some kids. One teacher walked up to my sister and warned her about her. She said she's she's hurt a lot of families. She took their kids out. She tried to get me. She just never could get me. He warned her. He, he liked her. And he warned her about it. He thought she was a good kid. He warned her about it. He was a good teacher. Even if I remembered his name, I wouldn't, just in case he went on went on to be... I think he did go on to be something. I think he became a principal at one school. And I was always sort of thankful about that because of how he treated my sister. How he warned her about that thing that was after him. I already knew about that thing. 
I mean, that thing actually threatened me in the hallway. That witch. Telling me she was going to send me where they did things to little boys. She told me that. But it was just my word against hers, and I told my mama that. She didn't learn about it years later. She said, well, why didn't you tell somebody? I said, well, it done no good. My word against hers. Done in the hallway where there wasn't nobody around. There was a, uh, there was a door, a closed door on one end, and it was sealed tight in that room. You couldn't hear the hallways. All you could hear was the echo of the stairs. Like, if you dropped something off them steps, you could hear it. But you wouldn't have heard it in that hallway on either side. And she knew she could get by with it. That's when she done it. She said, I'm going to send you where they do those. And, and I can't say what, exactly what she said. I could probably be banned for that. Starts with the R word. R-A-P-E. That's what she said to me. She grinned. She had an evil grin on her face when she said it. Evil. Be of all, she went to church. Her and her husband were big in church. He died a couple years, I think, his last year or the year before. And they were giving them a salute, and I thought, them, them evil things weren't Christians. If they were, they were evil Christians. What kind of Christian threatens a boy they're going to send them where they do things to them? I guess it's possible. I certainly wouldn't want them in my church. It's guests, maybe. Not members. Everybody's welcome to hear the word of God. Everybody needs I guess she did need it. She really did need it. She'll pay for it one day if she really did harm all them kids like that man told my sister. She'll pay for that one day. She'll burst tail wide open. She's probably getting close. They really did. There was this one for kids. And I think this is the one he was telling my sister about. Where they were so poor. And she took them kids away just because they were poor. She got by with it. And she said he said that was the worst case. He happened to be there when she done it. And he, this is the worst thing he ever seen in his life. Or he knew somebody that were there that, when they done it. That's what it was. I said, well, I'm going on 30 years. But he, he told her. He told her that that was the worst thing that he had heard about. The person that done it was with him was the worst thing they ever seen in their life. She was a party to it. She was that evil. I can believe it. it. I might not have been told it specifically, but the way she was with me, I can believe it. She was horrible with me. That old little principal was too, but boy, he, my daddy got a hold of him one time. They'd have got my daddy for terrorist threats. They do now. They, they, they. Really, he was the trouble. I mean, that little smart ass, big smart ass. I call him little because his, his soul was little. You know what he did that day? My daddy told him not to keep me at the school anymore. The very day that he threatened him. That means the schmuck wasn't scared. Oh, he was scared, but he wasn't scared like scared. He was arrogant. I was on the bus. He stopped that bus. He got out in front of it. Told the bus driver, get him off. Get him off. And he pulled me out on the line. And he stood there. He must have had somebody talking to him. Because he stood there with me up until my daddy got into the parking lot. Then my daddy come down there and he said, where's that son of a bitch? I told him he better not be here, but I'm still hoping he was here. So I wanted to give him peace of my mind, he told me. Where's that son of a bitch? So he got in his car and he drove off. Just as you were getting here. Why, that chicken little son of a bitch, he said. He ran with his tail between his legs. Of course, I did tell him he better not be there. He was an arrogant jackass. I mean, I was on my way home. And he stopped the bus from going. I didn't know none of it was going on. 
He called up my daddy and told him, if I'm late one more time, he's going to do something. My daddy said, don't you dare call me about my my work business. This is, this is important over here. This is business. I'm the manager. Don't you dare ever call me again. Well, what are you going to do about it if I do, he said. I'm going on memory here, too. My daddy could have told the tale a little better because he never forgot it. He never forgot a detail of it. <laughs> we heard it up until he died. He never forgot a detail. And I sure do wish I'd have taped him talking about it. I used to love how he would tell it. He didn't ever care whether they dressed him or not. He told these... One time, this old bully was bullying me around, and he told him, he said, he said, he said, I don't care who likes it, and I don't care whether y'all don't like it. He told the mama that, he told the social worker that, and he told the teacher that. He said, I'm going to spank his ass if he bothers my son anymore. And then I'm going to put my hands out and let you put the cubs on me, because I'm going to beat his ass with my belt. That's what he told him. He told him all that. He didn't ever worry about going to jail. I'm sure he didn't want to, but he didn't ever worry about it. Of course, he was bullied when he was in school. He, he got tough because of it. He got where he could take on the big people. I'm not just lying when I tell you that. My mama said he really could do that. Indeed, he had one crying. This big old muscular thing that's like a wrestler or something. Huge old guy. He messed with him one time and he, he grabbed him by his finger or something. He, I forgot exactly how he does it. He said he brought him down crying. He was begging him to get off of him. I forgot what they was doing. I uh, was messing with somebody or messing with his brother or something. I don't know. Wished I remembered that tale too, because he told me, he even told me how he done it. That was the part I shouldn't have forgot. Because he said anybody could use that defense, big or small. He said it don't matter how big you are, if you got them by that particular hole, you bring them down. My daddy knew how to do it. And I should have been paying attention to him. That was 2013 when he was telling me that. Lord, I should have been paying attention. I can't ask him now, you know, because he's gone. I'm telling you, though, right now, as bad as this world has gotten, as bad as we're in the, these times we're in today, I'd be going up to my daddy and asking him, what's that hold you used to tell me where you could bring down anybody? It didn't matter how strong you was or big or, big or small you was. Boy, I wish I remembered. I've looked it up and can't find it. I can't find it anywhere. I don't know who he learned it from. But I can't find it anywhere. A certain way you grab them by their hand. You can bring them down. And he said it didn't matter how tough you were. Dad, I'm stuck. I was going to let him on. Well, I, I got him saved at 100%. I'm going to get off anyway. 40 minutes into this. I just want to see what time it was. 10.41. My daddy knew how to fight people, but he always kept his you-know-what in his pocket just in case, and I'm talking about his thing they, the, the, the thing that they, they want to ban. 
He always kept with his back up just in case he needed it. Even though he was mean to me at times, there's a lot of things I admired about him. His strength was one of them. He wasn't mean to me all the time. I, 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 I should At that time, though, there was all kinds of bitter stuff. I mean, me and him was sort of, we wasn't talking. I got sick. Sort of started letting up there in the end. Not too much. That was stupid, too, because he was dying. He said, no, he's I had just gotten to an exchange with him. Just probably the day or the day before he got diagnosed. I mean, he started really getting bad. It was that quick. It was that night. He, it was that early that day. Of course, he was running us down. You know, he was throwing. Some I just told him off. I told him, one day you're going to stand before God doing all this stuff you do to your family. That game just closed. And he told me I was the one that was going to stand before God because I was being a disobedient son or something like that or whatever. But, Lord, he was really running us down. He was really running my mother. I just got up and I got in the space and I told him off. That was probably about the last really exchange I had with him. Uh, I will get off. I'll see y'all later. Maybe I actually hit the exit. I probably did.